What's up, everyone? My name is Edson Cardona, and I want to welcome you guys to the Hashtag Let's Kick the Series. On these episodes, we get the pleasure to be joined by professional athletes, get a little insight on their background and how they made it this far in their athletic careers. A conversation between athletes about their journeys, leading them to success. I hope you guys enjoy. What's up, everyone? How y'all doing? My name is Edson Cardona, and welcome back again to the Hashtag Let's Kick It series. For all those who joined before, thank you for coming back. For those who are joining for the first time, then welcome. For today, I have the pleasure to introduce my friend from the national team, Tommy Granito. Born in El Salvador, played for Western FC. Man, all the pro teams he played for, LA Firpo, FC Edmonton, Portland Timbers, let's see where else, Miami FC, and Sporting Kansas City. It's a pleasure to introduce him. So as we get started, here he is. Hey, my What's up, man? How you doing, man? Good, good, how are you, bro? Good to see you, man. How's everything? How's coronavirus treating you? Hey, man. Thank God everybody's safe here, my family. So, you know, I can't complain. Just waiting, wanting to play again, you know? I hear that, man. Everything's kind of all stopped. So, we're all just trying to stay fit out here, huh? Yeah, you, definitely. You training That's and stuff as well? Man. Yeah, you, man. Trying to. Trying to train. Uh, there's not much you can do. All the parks are closed, you know? So, just kind of find... Uh, what you can do by yourself in the street, running, staying fit, you know, keeping the same weight. So uh, yeah. it's tough. That's exciting, man. That's great. Why? Well, thank you again for coming in and let's get started, man. Welcome. You're the third person now in the, in the, in the hashtag Let's Kick It series. So I'm thankful for you, man. I appreciate you being here. No, thank you for having me, bro. It's a pleasure for sure. All right, man. So let's see. Where did your journey begin as an athlete, man? Yeah, man. Listen, I played here. Um, I'm from Miami, Florida, so I played here in Weston Academy. Yeah. Um, at the time, I was called to uh the U.S. national team training camps and stuff, the U18 and U20. Okay. And um, I played a year at Florida Gulf Coast University. Yeah. So when I was when I was 18, I was there, and then after my freshman year, you know, I was trying to play pro, and I didn't feel, you know, I was trying to see where my best spot could go. If I had to travel, see what I can do. And um, as at the time, that's nearly when I met you. I went to El Salvador. Yeah. So that we were we were training with the U20 to go to the World Cup. So, you know, I was able to, to be on that team. I played there. And after the World Cup, you know, I just started my professional career to shut off. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So that was pretty much like after that when you knew, like, okay, I can take it to the next level, right? Like, you knew after the World Cup and after making that selection team, you're like, all right, now I know that I can play at the highest level. I mean, that World Cup, there were so many, so many players there, so many high level players. So, like, was that the turning point for you, or did you know prior to that, like, okay, I can make it to the big leagues? You know? Well, it was uh, honestly, it was a life changing experience. You know, you're playing uh, in the highest level in your age group in the world. You yeah. Know? Um, you're competing with with the best players in the world so it definitely gives you an idea to see how good they are to compare yourself with them to see do I have it do I not have it what do I need to improve on and also you know to see if you could handle the pressure of playing a professional soccer there you're representing a country that um you know in El Salvador as you know it the, the soccer is everything over there oh um, yeah well, it's definitely. part of the culture so you know, we had the pressure to play. We played Turkey at the first game of the World Cup, and they were That's home. That's awesome, Turkey. man. And, you know, it didn't get the start we wanted, but later we beat Australia, and uh, it was the first win in the national, you know, national team history in a World Cup. So that was extremely, you know, 
like life changing um, for all, all the fans in El Salvador. For us, it was a great experience. And then being able to play against Colombia after was, you know, with the team that they had, it was that all incredible. So many good players, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had, they had a really good team, man. They had a really good team for sure. I remember uh, you got mad at the match one of those games, didn't you? Against Australia, where we won, yeah. How was that, man? How was that feeling? I mean, of course, you guys won, which is great. But on top of that, I mean, the icing on the cake, you know, man of the match. I mean, yeah, man, it was, to be honest, you know, when they told me after the game, I was so exhausted that you know, I, was, <laughs> I was just happy that, you know, that we won. And there was, you know, so much pressure for us because since we lost our first game, yes or yes, we had to win this one. If not, you know, there was no chance of going to the next round. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, we felt the tension between us, between our coaches, between the fans, the messages we got. And um, in the first 10 minutes of the game, we started losing. So it was definitely not the start that we had that we needed. Yeah. It was just, you know, that feeling was so, uh, you know, like, but we kept going. We started after that. We kind of started playing our game. We scored two goals in the first half. And after that, we were just able to, you know, keep the game, manage it kill yeah. the time and and we won so it was really it was incredible I, I cannot explain it's probably definitely one of the best experiences moments as a professional player you know winning that game which meant so much for the country so it's, and being man of the match gives you like you know you feel you feel the pressure and you feel that you know like accomplishment after so many months of working where you were there with us working you know how it was oh man how that tough was crazy it was. Summer, man. So it was definitely rewarding yeah a lot of that man that's great it's, it's good to hear that those those are like kind of like the turning points where you see like man like there's so much talent and you're part of that elite group you know at times people forget like hey it's not that easy to get to the top man there's a lot of things that you have to go through so that goes to my next question. Like, what obstacles have you had as a professional player? I mean, in college for your first year, or even before that at Weston, was there anything that really, like, set you back in your uh, career and where you at now? I mean, definitely. There were a lot of, you know, um, one on the top of my head. I'll give you an example. When I was in Portland, uh, we were playing LA Galaxy, and it was the last three games of the season, and I got into a tackle. I sprained my MCL. And I was out for a couple of months, and that just left um, that just left me without a contract. You know, um, they decided not to resign me. So, you know, I come back home. Uh, I come back home after after that game in LA. After yeah, we were playing at LA Galaxy. They flew me that night back to Portland to go to the go to the you know check me out to see what kind of injury I had. So after the game, I went straight to the airport. They um, they sent me to Portland, and I'm here in the in the plane, you know, with a swollen knee, not wondering is it, you know, how long will I be out for? What's going to happen with my contract? What's going to happen with my option? And with, you know, so many things are going in your head. And after having such a great season in Portland and working so hard, you know, it's just it's such like a downfall, and it's part of part of the, being a professional player. So once I'm that, um, you know, I just got back try to keep you know my motivation my composure and just get back at playing yeah man it's crazy because these uh these injuries are the ones right that really puts you into a mental state and those who are strong are the ones that conquer that you know that mentality you have to have a strong mentality because if not i mean like you said you could you could have not kept going could have been something where you could have had such a bad or worse injury to not play anymore yeah, yeah, yeah. There are things that, you know, it's part of it. It's part of that, you know, that mental toughness that you need to have in order to to get where you want to be. You know, it's, you know, there are things you can control. There are things you can't control. So, um, you know, these are things that, all right, you got an injured, but now it's my job to get back on my feet, to get back fit, to get back, you know, speaking with your agency. All right, now what's what's the next thing we do? What are the options? What can I do? What should I do? And, you know, he's kind of, you know, kind of starting from zero because uh, yeah. you go from having all these options, right? So if I don't sign with Portland, with the Timbers, uh, I could, I know LA's interested. I know this other team's interested. 
Yeah. Um, in foreign countries, these teams are interested. So, you know, you're kind of managing. And then from one day to another, you just have nothing. You know, and it's, like I said, you have to have that mental toughness to, to keep going and just, you know, keep working until something comes up. And yeah. once that comes, you got to take advantage of it. Yeah, that's that's crazy. And what what kept you motivated the whole time, though? Like, was it the teams that were contacting you or had interest in you? I mean, being hurt after that, I mean, what, what really kept you motivated? Of course, the love of the game, but... Yeah, know, was... I mean... I was, you know, you can't just, it, it's tough, man. It's tough. Once I left there, I didn't have any other, of, of having, you know, on a Saturday, you have five, six offers for next year. Yeah. Um, to that Monday, you have none. Or that Tuesday, you have none. So um, once, you know, I left there, I came back home to Miami. The season finished. My contract finished. And then I was able to sign here with, uh, with Miami FC. Um, yeah. And that motivation to playing where I grew up, playing at home, you know, um, in front of, you know, my friends, in front of my family um, is definitely, you know, motivating. And then having that chance that the national team calls you back again. So then I'm, yeah. you know, back with, with the Salvador's men's national team and being there is just, you know, it's, it's rewarding. It's rewarding, but... People, like I said, people don't see what happens behind the scenes. People don't see what happens outside the field, you know? Yeah. That's, yeah, people don't really know exactly what people, like, players, professional players go through, you know? There's a lot of things in the back of their mind that can shut a player off. But at the end of the day, like you said, that mental toughness is what gets you through that, you know? Yeah. And that, and that goes to my point. Like, how did you feel, like, after getting hurt? I mean, making that step from that injury – and then getting that call up. I know you said that's a lot, lot, like, rewarding, but what did you go through? Like, what were the steps like? Like, I know you had to go through physical therapy and all that, but, like, how tough was it for you exactly to go through that injury and know, like, hey, I can trust my knee again, you know, and focus on all that instead of, like, putting it on who interests right now but yourself as well, you know? Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, it's 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 tough. You see, you know, you know, you know. Thank God it wasn't. I I didn't need surgery. It wasn't like an ACL. It was the MCL, yeah. which for those that don't know, is the inside part of the knee. Where, you know, thank God you don't need uh, surgery. And even though I was out for about almost three months, two three months, I didn't need surgery. So I tried to look at. It was so tough that I tried to look into that, look in the positive side of everything. All right, all right. At least it was this, and it wasn't my knee, or I yeah. mean, like my my ACL or another part of my knee. You know. So once you know, thank God, when you're with an MLS team, once you sign a contract with them, they can't release you until you have proven that they have taken care of you and you're fit to play. Or yeah. You know, they've done several like certain standards for you to let go. They can't just let you go out of you know being injured so in the being in the mls you have that which is which is huge so yeah. i looked into these little things as all right so portland is i was you know i was portland is helping me at least get better i'm getting the best treatment i think um but you know these guys are taking care of you and i'm here hanging out with you know with valeri with the best players in the mls you're talking you know i get to hang out with them they're, you know, they're inspiring me. They're helping move on. So I was in those situations that, all right, at least I'm hanging out with the best players in the country and they're giving me advice and they are helping me out. So, uh, uh, you know, these are little things that I had to focus on to look into positive and saying, you know, this is where I want to get back to. And, you know, yeah. I just got to do whatever it takes. Uh, Portland didn't decide to to renew me. So I was like, okay, you know, Portland didn't sign me. Uh, for my option for the next year. So now I head back to Miami and I'm speaking, you know, like I said, with my agent to see where the next, where the next big club I could go to. Yeah. Yeah. That's great, man. It's, it's good to see though, a lot that toughness that you had, because at the end of the day, it could have been, you know, a lot worse where you could have gone another way and not had that option to go somewhere else, you know? And so how was that? after getting i mean not getting that option from portland leaving and then getting signed for other teams how was it again like that feeling of being a rookie to a new team and 
joining a new team once again like how was that it was you know once i got you know i was able to once i was able what well, was i was fit again i was able to play i was training like i said i signed with with miami and it was a great group great group of professionals the level was high just being able to compete you know yeah. at, with other professionals is it's so it's, you know at this point of this is my sixth year as a pro it's you kind of get addicted to competing you know to competing with the best to competing with with what you want to play with aiming at your goals and um you know being back with this team i had other options to go and most of them were teams of the usl um but i decided to stay here with in in miami you know uh i was five years playing away started with free in el salvador then with edmonton yeah. then with sporting kansas city and then with portland and then it's like you know i have a chance to play at home so you know take advantage of it have fun with it take advantage so i signed there i had a great year last year i love it here and i i signed again this year so you know right now i'm really happy where i'm at and you know it's it's part of uh it's part of the process things that you know you have to learn that trust the process i know everybody says that but it's it's really yeah. true for sure i know everyone says it but at the end of the day you got to trust be patient too and let God deal with that, man. He always has a plan for us, which is good. It's good to hear that you're happy in Miami as well. Um, and, I mean, you're back home, so how's that? I mean, having your family there, your support system. I mean, goes to my next question, too. Like, who do you give your credit to, like, your success? Who can you give your credit to? Listen, man, um, that's, a, that's an interesting question. That's a very good question. And I think, you know, mostly I look at things um, – outside the field what keeps me going what keeps me you know at tough times that keeps my head yeah. you know in the right mindset and it's definitely my family um once my family you know outside the field i'm speaking with my family they're giving me advice um yeah. with everything so that's what gives me tranquility and then on the field i'm ready to go and even though i've had great years and then like i said there are times that you know you have ups and downs but people that are always there for you helping you looking out for you you know really wanting the best for you um is is my family and that's what you know i think that's what helped me the most and you realize um as um i'm 26 now you know as my sixth year as a pro you realize how interesting you know how interested people are you're doing well you know you got all these people with you you got all these yeah everyone did yeah. something yeah. that and then from one day to another, you're you're not there, and then you know you have you turn around, you have nothing. So you know, looking back and you know, always knowing that my family's there, it's it's huge. So I think that's that's what helped me the most. Yeah, there's a there's a good question here that someone's asking. What did you think the new format of the Conquer Calf, where Salvador has to face? Who's that? Panama. Antigua Barbuda. Yeah, man. I mean, right now we were with the points. We're able to qualify, you know. But now yeah. with all this Corona and the uh, the FIFA game suspended, they want to they want to change the format, which you know, and I don't agree with. This is where these are the standings. We deserve to be where we are. We're ahead of Canada, but somehow, you know, they want to switch that. So I don't agree with it. I feel like the six, uh, the top six national teams should be where they are but clearly yeah. they're trying to change that so i do not agree with that at all but if that's the case then then we just have to work and beat the other national teams yeah you can't change that but i mean for sure all that hard work it'll, it'll pay off you know yeah um so let's see who has been like the best player like you said you talked about larry too who gave you advice and all that but who can you say like was like one of the players that you really looked up to when going into a locker room that i shared the locker room with or yeah. that I played against both shared and played against i know it's tough i mean God yeah, it, it, it's tough man <laughs> it's tough um you know sharing a locker room like i said with with valeri was big time yeah man. um being that that was, i was hilarious. and he you know we got so we, we were able to be you know so close friends i would go to his house all the time i would be with his family he was he was like a big brother to me and that year he won mvp uh, of the mls 
So in having that uh, relationship with them, I think had a big influence on me. So I would, I would think of that way, you know, uh, we would speak about soccer all day long. Um, and then of players that I played against, I don't know, man. Uh, I spoke with Raul Gonzalez after I played against him, the Spaniard, a couple of times. And, you know, just what surprised me about playing against Raul, that even though, you know, he's won everything with Madrid, with the national team and this and that, and he's here with us and he's competing and he's, you know, he's getting mad. He's, you know, and see him after everything he's done, he's here with us and competing. This was back with the NASL. You know, I spoke with him, and uh, it was just motivating to see, wow, this guy, after everything he's done, he's here, and he's hungry still. You know, he wants to win. So that was, I felt that was, you know, very humble on his part, you know. So th those are things uh, that really, you know, helped me and, and look at the way things that I should. Yeah, it's great to see when players, even when they get older, still have that urge to compete. And never give up, you know. I still want to win. I mean, no one wants to lose, of course, but yeah, man, for sure, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, what advice would you give yourself, if a uh, younger self, about the journey you've taken? What advice? Um, it's a good question, man. What advice? Basically, you know, try to. Um, try to take advantage of certain moments you know um, there are times that you get you don't get uh, second chances in many things you know so once you have an opportunity there you have to make sure that it's yours make sure that you do what you have to do to to get it you know like I said when I was in sporting Kansas City you're there trained with MLS teams you got you know it's a great chance same thing with Portland it's a great chance same thing in the World Cup you have these are times that you got to prove yourself that you got maybe one chance, you know, one chance to to get what you want and you just kind of take advantage of it. Just be ready for it. That's what, you know, and that's what I tell other people as well. Yeah, not let go of that time to shine, you know. Exactly, so man. Not let that one go. I mean, you have it in your hand and just can't let it go. Exactly, bro. Exactly. And last question, man. We talked about the World Cup a little bit, how that was one of your fondest moments your best moments you had but as a professional soccer player what really was that one moment highlight moment that you can be like damn I always remember that time you know like if it was yesterday or like a goal that you scored or you know anything aside from the world cup, aside I think the first time was uh, when I played my first MLS game was sporting Kansas City um Back in 2016, I think it was. Um, I played with the first team. I started that game. I was in uh, the team of the week in CONCACAF uh, as well. And I got a great assist. And it was just, you know, have I always wanted to play, you know, in, t in a team in the MLS. And having that chance, I think, was, you know, so rewarding. It was a great experience. It was a Wednesday, I remember, and that. Saturday, we were playing the USL final as well in New York. So I played in Kansas City, and then the next day I flew and I met the team uh, in New York uh, to play the USL final against the New York Red Bulls too. So, you know, you got this week that's so much going on, a USL final, you're playing your first game with the MLS. You know, it's yeah. I think those were the times that you worked so hard for. So these are the times that I will always remember. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome, man. I'm glad to see you're still doing well. I mean, everyone's with this coronavirus, but I appreciate the time that you've given us for the hashtag Let's Kick It Serious, man. It's glad I'm glad to hear that you're at Miami now. See, and hopefully in the next couple months we can see you and see everything that you guys are doing. And I appreciate you, man. I appreciate the time that you gave us. Yeah, man, no problem. Thank you, bro. Thank you for having me. I hope to see you again soon. Thank you for everybody that was watching, all Salvadorians uh representing thank you guys for always you know being with us we played there in in january in la against iceland uh again that i started which i enjoyed and it was great fan base everybody so thank you guys for always supporting and being there for 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 me and for the national team all right so thank you guys definitely thank you bro much love bro have a good one all right man take care bro. bye well guys i appreciate those who joined in 
Um, next week, we're going to have the same thing. 